So that secure pork supply plan is preparedness. It's something that somebody's going to do on farm. They're going to look at what their what what their capabilities are, what their farm is, and they're going to make a plan for if we get this disease, this is the enhanced biosecurity that we can set in place so that we're really unlikely to have that disease at our farm. Yep. Which means if we're really unlikely to have that disease, then we're way more likely to be able to go about business as close as possible to normal. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name's Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me this week in our recording studios is Dr. Corey Bromfield. Dr. Bromfield is a swine extension veterinarian based out of the University of Missouri. Corey, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Why don't you give the audience a little background on yourself? Thanks, Clayton. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm Corey Bromfield. I am the swine extension veterinarian at the university, and I've been here for about the last seven years. Uh, prior to that, I worked at the University of Illinois, where I got to be a research animal vet for agriculture animals. So I got to do the really fun, cool stuff, all the interesting little weird biomedical projects that you might think about doing with pigs. Or I also got to do ag projects. And I spent so much time working with the pigs that I knew just had to had to go 100% swine all the time. So I came down to the University of Missouri where I get to work with producers. I get to work with veterinarians. I get to take the extension information we have from the university and take it out to the people. And it's great because there's pigs involved. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Yeah, you got a wonderful team there um, around you, supporting you. And I know, um, Corey, uh, everybody in the Extension office at the University of Missouri sees it as their mission to help producers. And we're going to talk today about how you do that, specific to secure pork supply. Um, secure pork supply is not a brand new program, but it's also not one that's been around for 20, 30 years. And I'm sure that there are producers out there that are already enrolled in secure pork supply, maybe very familiar with it. But there's probably some other producers that are not familiar with it. And to be fair to the, the audience, why don't we start for a little background? When I say secure pork supply, what does that mean to you? And what should producers know about the secure pork supply plan process? Yeah, absolutely. So secure pork supply to me, that is that enhanced biosecurity plan, which helps to ensure business continuity in the face of a disease outbreak in the U.S. Um, that's that's what I feel like it is at its most basic. But but the the plan for it or the, the ultimate um, underpinning of it is that if we get something in the U S most of the U S is going to freak out. Most of the rest of the world is going to freak out because it's going to change what we're able to do. It might change our ability to export. It might change how many pigs we have available to export. And so that secure pork supply plan is preparedness. It's something that somebody's going to do on farm. They're going to look at what their, what, what their capabilities are, what their farm is, and they're going to make a plan for if we get this disease, this is the enhanced biosecurity that we can set in place so that we're really unlikely to have that disease at our farm, yep. which means if we're really unlikely to have that disease, then we're way more likely to be able to go about business as close as possible to normal. Yeah. You know, uh, Corey, I think everybody knows if we have an outbreak with African swine fever or foot and mouth, right, some sort of foreign animal disease, that, you know, we've heard there might be a standstill time where, you know, we're not moving pigs and and, uh, and, and even feed ingredients, you know, complete feeds for a period of time. And secure pork is maybe a way in which we're going to get the state animal health officials comfortable that, yep, all right, we tested. We don't have that disease. So, first of all, we're negative now. 
but also we have good biosecurity practices at our farm that we can get comfortable that even once we start to interact with our ecosystem, right? Once we start to interact with our feed mill and our truck wash, that we're not going to drag disease into this place. And we can start to resume that continuity of business without creating a huge risk for the neighborhood. Is that a fair way to describe it? I, I think that's very fair. Um, I think that, you know, that standstill is really so that so that as many people as possible can get a handle on where the disease is. Um, and that biosecurity plan, if you've got an enhanced biosecurity plan that's designed to keep something like African swine fever out, then once you've shown, hey, I don't have it, and we've d gone through the standstill, we've tried to figure out where it is, then you can show you're, you're much more comfortable, um, if you will, with that state animal health official that, yeah, we're going to we're going to be able to keep doing business without changing things, without getting the disease into our farm because of these practices that we have in place. Very good. Corey, talk to us about how you're helping producers in Missouri with their secure pork supply plans. Yeah. So extension is really in this great position where we get to we get to assist, we get to help, we get to be the addendum, the added, um, the the side extra, um, I, you know, I'm running out of words to even describe it at this point, but basically we're, we, we sort of talk amongst ourselves at Extension that we are the university for Missouri, not just the university of Missouri. Yeah. And so we have the time, I'm, I'm a swine veterinarian, but I'm not working with pigs on a day-to-day -day basis, helping farms um, get their purrs under control or helping farms that are dealing with an E. coli outbreak. Um, there are other veterinarians who are doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. And the state is asking those veterinarians also to help out with the secure pork supply plan. Um, and at some point we just run out of time, right? Like if you're working on the E. coli outbreak, you're not working on the secure pork supply plan. So, because I'm not working on the E. coli outbreak, I have the time and the ability and the funding behind me to be able to go out to farms, to sit with a producer and help them look at their farm holistically. And what are the things that we're doing now that are great that we need to keep doing? What are the things that are perfectly fine for now, but we might need to think about doing a little bit differently mm -hmm. if something comes in? Yeah. Uh, and basically right now we've got the we've got the time and we've got the technology to take this out to their farm to sit and have that discussion when their veterinarian is working on something else yep. uh so really it's just that it's the bonus veterinarians <laughs> thanks corey excellent information and really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing that uh, with me and and for our audience and to the audience thank you very much for being a part of this episode if you haven't liked and subscribed to the podcast, please do so. Um, it certainly helps us to recruit more people to what we think is some excellent information. For Dr. Corey Bromfield, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us on the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, and please have a great rest of your week.